Do you hear that? No? Well, let me play it again, because that's the sound of the future. All you hear is road noise and little pebbles getting crushed under the wheels. Because this car has no engine. It's Ford's electric focus, and yes, it's the very same one that was featured on the Jay Leno show, where movie stars raced it around a track and tried to avoid cutouts of Al Gore. But you know what? It's a real car, and today we're going to put it to the test. Hi, I'm Nathan Adlin, and I'm standing in front of a 2010 Ford Fusion Hybrid. This currently represents the top technology for hybrids in the United States. Not only that, but this vehicle has acquired several awards, including North American Car of the Year. Hybrid technology? That's so yesterday. This is Roman Micah, and I'm standing in front of Ford's future. At least what I think is Ford's future. It's a new Ford electric focus. No gas engine, only an electric motor, unlimited mileage, as long as you can plug it in. Range-wise, it goes about, well, this is a prototype, so we don't know, but the one that's coming out is going to go about 100 miles before it needs recharging. Let's take both for a ride and see where the future leads. How does this first generation Ford Electric Focus play, play into that kind of long-term vision of electrification? In the, it's a big um, word, huh? Yeah, it is. And I, I hate the word electrification. <laughs> and then we have an electrified fleet. Uh -huh. In the next two years, we're going to introduce five new electrified vehicles. And that includes an all-new version of this all-electric Ford Focus. But let's not rush the future. Let's roll the tape back and let's take a look at what you can buy today. And today, you can buy this hybrid Ford Fusion. The Fusion already gets good gas mileage, high 30s, and like many hybrids, it's hard to tell that you're driving a car that's partially powered by electricity. You know, if you didn't look at the dashboard, if you didn't look at the displays, if you didn't look at what was going on beneath you, and just looking ahead, the suspension feels pretty much like a regular Ford Fusion. The driving position is the same. It's a very similar car, and that's the thing, it's a car. It's not some electric whiz-bang that you just don't understand. So now it's my turn to drive the Ford Fusion Hybrid. I can already tell you one thing. I've driven this car before, and Nathan's right. The most remarkable thing about this car is just how unremarkable it really is. Look, Nathan, I got like, I got a whole tree growing here, man. Your garden was like that, dude. Yeah, okay, so, you know, I'm not environmentally sound. I can't help it. Look at that. Pretty soon I'm going to have, like, a tomato. So, as you can tell, we're stuck in traffic right now. And that's one of the great things about being in a hybrid or electric car, because when you're stuck in traffic, you're using no gas. In a hybrid car, the engine certainly will come on after a while because you'll run the battery down using the air conditioner and the radio and such. But in an electric car, there's no engine to turn on. Actually, no motor. Since electric cars don't have engines, they have motors. There are two potential struggles that engineers always have to deal with when making a car electric. Number one, obviously, is space. You need to put the battery somewhere. When you look at the uh, all-electric focus, is that there's a little bit of space that's missing here because of the battery pack. And number two is weight. Both are something that consumers don't necessarily think of when they think about buying electric cars. First thing, yeah, we're good. First thing you notice about this car is that it makes funny sounds again. Hey, Nathan, have you ever wondered if you can do a burnout in an electric car? Yeah. Oh, let's try. Go for it. All right. Let's see go. if you can do it. Oh, that's no fair. He's on dirt. Um, the thing about electric cars I've noticed is that when you put your foot down and you're going 30 or 40 miles per hour, sometimes you think you're going 20. Uh, and that's because there's no sound, there's no corresponding gear noise, nothing like that really goes in. All you have in this car is like wind noise. There are things in this car that don't correspond the same way as a gas engine. You don't have the lag when you're getting up to altitude, which by the way, we're what, at 7,000 feet now, 8,000 feet? We're getting there, yeah, we're probably yeah. at like 6 to 7. Okay, and well, the car doesn't care. It, 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 go, take it up to 10,000, it won't care. But in terms of um, 
what you're used to when you put your foot down, the gears drop down and you shoot off and you hear the engine, it's not gonna happen in this car. What happens in this car is you put your foot down, you go. So getting point used and shoot. To point and shoot. Yeah. I'm gonna drop some names. Drew Barrymore, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Rush Limbaugh, and of course, President Obama. These are just some of the people that have driven this car. And you know what? That's about as close to those people as I'm ever gonna get, because I'm gonna get to drive the car now. All right, I really don't know why you need a key, but there is one. So you put it in, you hit the button, the car starts whirling and buzzing, put it in drive, more whirling and buzzing. Use the turn signal, of course, and here we go. The reason I dropped all those names was because they kind of signal where the world is heading to in terms of cars. And if President Obama is driving this car and Rush Limbaugh, you know that electric cars are now on the map. It's uh, about as straightforward as a car can be. You push the button, you put the car in drive, and you go. There's not much more to it than that. Um, our focus is targeting up to 100 mile range, and um, it's got a 23.1 um, kilowatt hour battery in there. They can go up to 85 miles an hour. How about recharge time? Um, on a 110, it's going to take up to 17 hours. Oh. On a 220, it'll take up to 6 to 8 hours. And we're always looking at ways to reduce that. So I bet you're wondering what's under the hood. Well, the motor control and the inverter. You know, that's all really Spanish to me because I'm used to pistons and carburetors. But you know what? This, potentially, is the car of the future. Ford thinks so, at least, because in 2012, you'll be able to get yours, and Ford believes that a significant portion of their customers will be driving cars like this. Roman Micah, reporting for TFLcar.com.